Alternative Radio. Missy and I are talking about verbal processing. Ladies and gentlemen, please take your seats. The show is about to begin. to another episode of I Find and Peace. This is the podcast where Missy and I talk about different ways that we can live on a daily basis, our inner peace and happiness, regardless of what's going on in life. And uh, before we get into the topic, it uh, for those on video, it looks like we're both inside. Yeah. <laughs> Usually it's one or the other or both outside. Yeah. It's way, way too hot out for us. Uh, thank God for air conditioning is all I can say. This is like you walk outside and within five minutes you're you're just drenched with sweat. So, so we just thank God for being uh, the type of people that get to uh, sit behind a desk and and enjoy the cool AC. Yeah, well, we are lucky that way. And even in the middle of uh, middle of winter, I I will still say, thank God for AC. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <Something> um, <laughs> yeah, no, I, I was hoping to sit outside and it's kind of cloudy, which would uh, uh, be pretty nice for lighting and all. But um, yeah, we're we're upwards of 80 some percent humidity at the moment. So, Ew. yeah, that's just gross. Yeah. And, and I think yesterday um, I got a, a screenshot of the heat index uh, from Will's truck, like what what was the temperature in his truck? And that's what he's been working in. Uh, 105, you know, so like I get that the trucks, but usually he's got his air on in the truck. So it's right. not like the temperature inside the truck. It's the outside temperature where he's at and where he's working. And and so it's just, he's drained by the time he comes home. So, sure. yeah, which really kind of leads into like the verbal processing because <laughs> it's funny. Um, you know, I just heard somebody say, well, I'm a verbal processor. And I thought to myself, well, she was a woman. So I thought to myself, I thought, aren't, aren't all women verbal processors? <laughs> and um, the more I think about it, you know, for me, that's my story. I'm, I feel like I, when I talk about something, it makes me feel better. Like, and um, whether it's to a girlfriend or my mom or whoever, and Will especially, but at the end of the day, sometimes, you know, and I take no offense to it. He's like, I don't want to talk about anything. I don't want to talk about my day. I don't want to share um and that makes him feel better not being a verbal processor um so yeah i just thought that it would be cool to kind of have like a male female perspective on verbal processing and um it might help some of our users i mean users our our, uh, listeners in in our in their relationships you know Uh, having an issue with the verbal processing apparently i'd like (laughs) it um yeah no, there's this a very interesting topic uh and uh, as we had said before we started recording and i i had never thought of uh this topic before uh, i guess i just live under the assumption of a reality of uh some people like to verbalize while others don't um and uh, usually i do stereotype that you know by gender but i i, I don't know if that's always true across the board. Uh, right, right, you know, right. There's probably exceptions, but um, yeah, I, I think generally, and, and scientific studies ha- have shown this, that um, females tend to verbalize more, that they use mm-hmm. a lot more words throughout the day uh, <laughs> than do males. Um, and I'm not a hundred percent sure why that is, to be honest. Oh, you know, ooh, I got a I got a great cool. response to that. Okay, go for it. It's it's really just a funny response. I mean, no harm by it, but it's because Uh-oh. men don't listen. We have to say everything twice. <laughs> <laughs> no, sorry, that was just a meme. So when you said it initially, I laughed because it came to mind, and I thought, 
and don't get me wrong i think men are great listeners um and at the same time you know we probably tend to put a lot more use of a whole lot of words into something that could be said very simply you know and um um i think that i think it's more the masculine feminine even more than the the male female you know it's not not necessarily gender but uh what kind of uh, you know what we embody if we if we embody feminine traits then we may be more verbal processors if we embody uh masculine traits then it's more like a focused this is the response this is the answer or um and i think that you know growing up into my experience i've always learned that men when they're listening they're looking for a way to resolve you know, right. oh, oh, there's there's a problem. You're complaining because the trash needs to be taken out. Oh, I got it. I'll take out the trash. And then she'll stop talking. <laughs> you know, and I say that with all the love of my heart, because uh, that doesn't happen in my household, honestly. <laughs> but, um, but, you know, they are typically listening with the response of how can I help? How can I fix? And that's right. a very loving and endearing trait for, for men. Um, but women, we just want to process what's going on in our head because sometimes it's not just it's all the inner connectivity if you will it's you know the house has to do with the business has to do with the kids and the schedule and and everything is really interconnected and men are like okay right now i'm in my working box so i'm just gonna work and and when you come in and and you want to talk to me well i'm still in my working box i'm not in my relationship box you know and so um for us, the verbal processing kind of helps us keep an order to what's going on up here and and uh, release some of the energy of it. Um, I don't know. That's that's, and I can only speak for myself personally, mm -hmm. but but that's kind of how I I perceive it. There's always exceptions to everything, and you know, all we can do on a podcast is, is speak in very general terms. Um. Right. But, you know, as you were saying that, and, and that resonates, you know, a, a, a lot of truth, you know, that um, where I can see, you know, when, you know, women get together, they're, they're typically very talkative with each other. Yes, about, you know, yes we are. <laughs> and, you know, well, one of the guys comes over, you know, and then we can look at each other and, you know, kind of go, hey, the other goes, hey, and we pretty much have figured out by the look and, and the tone. Okay. You know, you seem to like okay. You know? <laughs> yeah. You know, and, and that, that's kind of where you leave it. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I was wondering while you're talking, you know, where, where has this come from? You know, what, what is the evolution of this? Mm. Um, cause I, as you're saying, you know, when you're dealing with children and households and work and, and putting this all together, you know, does that create the need for verbalization, um, where maybe in, in the masculine that hasn't needed to happen, but you know, I'm, I'm trying to like think in my head go back in, in evolutionary history of. I, I wonder why that actually started, you know, when, when you're um, thinking, you know, like male, female, cave person, you know, yeah, sitting yeah. there grunting, at, at yeah. what point Grab did it baby. evolve into women really use more fire. words? <laughs> yeah, 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 or, or shh, deer, you know, we're getting ready to kill the deer or something like that. We, we don't, uh, I, I mean, that makes so much sense that you say that because the women were communicating, okay, well, I'm going down to the the river to get the water you know um i'm gonna come back and cut up the potatoes so we can you know whatever however they yeah. they communicated that in that way at that point but we were the community you know we were the space for everything to happen and the men were the the hunters and they had to you know had one task to go out and provide for the family and and still that's you know that's the stigma today right you know because there's something wrong with a man, not not by my my uh, standards, of course, but by society's standards, if he's not providing for a family, mm -hmm. but you know, gosh, that's that's a and and women have really taken on that masculine kind of role, 
you know, to just go out and get it done and I don't need anybody kind of mentality. Right. So it's really like, I don't know if we're role reversing in this, you know, um, not that this has anything to do with verbal processing, but when you think about it, evolutionary, like we're kind of coming out of that matriarch, uh, you know, I'm uh -huh. sorry, patriarch, and we're moving into a matriarch where, where we're starting to understand each other a little bit better. We're starting to um, communicate more. We're starting to be more open to different ways of people's uh, individualism and creativity. Um, so I just kind of think that that's all pretty interesting that, you know, maybe we might find that the masculine or male might start to open up and start to process a little bit different verbally. Which is interesting because then if we're looking at way back in capers in time and that we have evolved to where we are now and, and if we are now evolving into, uh, you know, maybe more in a certain sense of a blending of some of these roles uh, of masculine and feminine, um, does that then either bring us back to the capers in times or are we blending this into one role? It's balance, right? I mean, I think that, mm -hmm. I think that there, I don't care if you're male, female, or, you know, any of the other um, sexuality preferences that are out there. We all have masculine, feminine inside of us. Mm -hmm. And I think that, that we get to be the best version of ourselves when we find that balance between the, 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 right. let's get it done and you know oh let me be creative about it and have have fun with it or here's the pattern of what i'm meant to be and what's the space that i'm surrounding myself in in order for that to happen right mm -hmm. not just i'm going out to do right because we have a lot of doership in our society right now you know and that's that that um it's how we we predict our success and our accomplishments and our worthiness and and i think that we're kind of pulling away from that because we've gotten to the extreme of it and i think that we're starting to really incorporate more of that creative side more of the let's have fun with life let's be mm -hmm. um and i know that it's really hard because a lot of people they they really do have a very opinion uh, uh, an opinionated um thought process about millennials, but I think that millennials are kind of helping us to figure out that balance and, and bring right. it back to, well, why wouldn't you just do what you love? Why wouldn't you just have fun with it? And yes, we all have things that we get to do every day, but why not make it enjoyable and fun, you know, instead of hard and, and challenging and, and um, I don't know, boring. Like it, it's really, it's just monotony you know, when we're doing the same thing over and over again and um, and we're expecting a different result and they're giving us a, a, a way to get different results, mm -hmm. you know? So, yeah, it's definitely very interesting yeah. to consider. Well, which is where I was wondering with that evolutionary blend into what you were just saying that, you know, we, we take the, the best of both and then put it into one. Mm -hmm. Um. Well, which, you know, I think when we're talking, you know, how we process things verbally, too, it, it's important, I think, to understand that communication is more than verbal. Okay. And when we look at the whole of communication, we put more weight on the verbal, but what about the nonverbal as well? Mm -hmm. You know, the, the what's not being said or, or what's being communicated through a look, a tone, yeah, yeah. an action. Yeah, not what you said, but how you said it. <laughs> yep, exactly that. Um, so, yeah, you know, I, I think that that's part of it, too, where, you know, maybe you have more of that feminine it is more accustomed on, on the verbal side to... Hmm. define it and spell it out and describe and, and all of that where on the masculine we may use less words but we're still communicating 
um, through our looks and tones and grunts and yeah, yeah. things like that. And honestly, it's a learned behavior. You mm -hmm. know, like so so Will and I have been together for six six years almost, and we can go out in public and we'll see something and we just look at each other and we know exactly what the other person is thinking um without saying a word so i <laughs> and uh, I, a cute little story we went out we were furniture shopping mm -hmm. and um did i tell you that i might have i might have mentioned this story before but it, it mm -hmm. just it cracks me up every time i think about it is we walked by a gentleman he was in his sunday best it was sunday they must have just come from church and he's reclined in a lazy boy chair and i mean he's suit and tie you know and will and i he he did not look on the living side he looked like he was in a casket dead you know because he was laid back relaxed Ooh. checking out the chair yep but both and i will and i looked at each other knew exactly what we were thinking and my son who was at that point 15 i think runs up behind me and he goes mom did you see that guy he looks dead <laughs> right and we're like totally like Shh, you know like don't say that you know but at the same time that's exactly what we were thinking so you know it's very easy to to learn that kind of behavior when you're surrounded with other people or you know um your upbringing yep. um and i i think that that for certain you know myself i i have four sisters and then I have my mom. So we are all definitely very verbally, um, we're verbal processors. And my brother, on the other hand, who kind of hung out with dad most of the time, you know, I don't want to say grunts, you know, but, <laughs> but, you know, there's, you have to really kind of pull it out of them. Like, is, is everything okay? Is there anything you need? What can we do? You know, are you, have, are you having a problem? And like, I mean, still to this day, has trouble asking for things right and i think that i think that the way that we look at men is they're strong right which i i do believe that they're physically stronger than us and sometimes i i have a tendency to believe because i'm female that they're mentally stronger than us but i always want the men in my life to know that that the door is open if they want to verbally process even though they don't you know, uh, and and I I, I kind of wonder if that's a stigma because uh, that we have put on them as a society that they can't verbally process because then that makes them weak. Like vulnerability is a weakness; it's not a strength. And mm -hmm. so, because men are strong, maybe they shouldn't be vulnerable. Oh, I think there's definitely a, a cultural, societal you know uh a tone in all of that of, of to mm. you know what 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 can men say how do they emote um how do they act i i think some of that is breaking down in in yeah. current society uh you know if, if you were to see a guy um emoting or um you know more verbal or or crying or whatever i i don't think it would be hit with the same stigma in most areas as it used to yeah although i think there's still you know pockets of, of that still exist right. um but one of the things what when you had said you know that that we don't want to the, the thing that popped in, into my head is maybe we don't know how to Mm. so yeah never, never been taught yeah and and again let's go back to society and culture you know that that's kind of not the thing that you know a guy does so if then you you know growing up with, with a, a lot of females that was just okay to do all of you know the emoting that you want um but then right that was your learned behavior and you learned how best to do it uh growing up as a guy where that's not something that was what society would have you do or that you didn't know how to do you know so for me it's myself and my brother so there was only one female in the house uh so you know how much are you taught how to do that oh yeah 
So, you know, uh, it may come across as, you know, I, I don't want to do it, mm -hmm. but it might be more, I, I really don't know how to do it, or, or I don't even know what you're asking for to right. even know how to respond appropriately. Well, I mean, and, and, and putting the words to the thoughts and the feelings may also not be, if, it, you know, I'm, I'm assuming that's what you're indicating, but, you know, um, like I can tell when Will's in a bad mood, I just can tell mm -hmm. and I'll go, what's wrong? And he'll go, nothing. And I'm like, okay. And then days later, he's figured it out and he's like, yeah, you remember the other day and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, <laughs> I knew something was going on. Like, mm -hmm. But he didn't know how to communicate it verbally, you know? Right. Um, and see, I have two boys as well. Uh, well, I mean, like your mother as well. <laughs> anyway, um, Sarek is my younger son and he is, he is so emotional. He wears his heart on his sleeve. He cries a lot and, oh. and I'm okay with that. I'm like, look, you know, if you, that's how you're feeling go ahead and let it out. And, you know, um, where when I grew up, if I was crying, it was, you know, it was just not that way. Not that I have any, I had a great childhood. It just, my older siblings would tease me and, you know, like would howl at me because I was, you know, dramatic. <laughs> and, um, and my older son is just um, the complete opposite. You know, he's mm -hmm. just that very masculine, like everything's fine. I know something's wrong with me. I just, like you said, I don't know how to share it. And I don't know why. I don't know why I feel that way. You know, so um, again, I just I just want to make sure that that the openness is there, yep. and but of course, if the willingness is not there, it won't ever matter how much openness is there. Oh, exactly. And and I'm not going to say that you know that's true for all men. You know that it, yeah. it's it's the I don't know how to. I, I think there's going to be some that don't want you. Um, yeah. You know, for uh, whatever their reasons. But uh, I will say in uh, my clients when I have males who are having issues with relationships in the majority of those cases they really do care about the relationship and and the other um, but a lot of times it is either I don't know how to or it's even I, I don't understand what the other needs wants expects mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. etc um so i think even if you can be very verbal in your processing does it always mean that the other can translate accordingly to all the verbal oh i agree hold wholeheartedly because we have time to think about it before we open our mouths and say it to you and then we're hitting you like a ton of bricks like <laughs> here's all this information and you're like uh okay what do i do with that you know let me let me think about it for a little while let me consider what you've said so i i try to always you know um put it out there look i know you haven't had time to think about this as much as i have i think this is a great idea you consider it and get back to me you know and let me know what you think right. and um i think that's fair you know what i mean like not that there's unfairness in answering right away because there might be an answer right away mm -hmm. but sometimes we we just don't stop our brains don't stop and um i think that i think that that's part of why for us all that energy is is flowing through our minds that verbal processing is so helpful for us right which i think is important when, when we're looking in general at communication skills that yeah you know, when we're trying to communicate with another, and especially if we're talking about relationship, you know, type issues, I think it's important for each person to maybe read back in a way, you know, what they're hearing. Yeah. Because, you know, that's something that, that I found through my clientele is a lot of times what they're hearing is not at all what the other person was intending to communicate you know right. and and without that reading back and saying this is what i'm hearing or this is how i understand it uh you know they're just responding and in, in what they felt was what they heard 
you know, yeah. and then the other one is like, well, what, what's going on here? Because that, that's not what we're talking about. So it's so cute. You share that. And I'm like, like a bell went off in my head, to be honest with you, because <laughs> I was uh, sharing with Will the other day. You know, I had so much to do, I, you know, blah, 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 blah. New business. Everything's, you know, we're ramping it up. Everything's the customers are starting to come. Everything's great. But it's a lot because I'm doing mm. it by myself. And um, and he goes, well, we could just sell it. And I went, excuse me. <laughs> like I looked at him. I'm like, wait a minute. We've been in business for a year. It's finally starting to kick off. We're getting some residual out of all the efforts I've put in in the last year. And you want to sell it? You're crazy. And he was like, okay, not the answer. Like, like I didn't mean to say it like that. But right. again, that was like, oh, you have a problem? Let me solve it this is how we can solve it. And then it won't be a problem anymore. And I'm like, I, I understand. And I appreciate the mm -hmm. love. I appreciate that, that you want to help in that way. But, but it was just, I needed to vent. I needed to like, you know, not feel overwhelmed and he helps every chance he gets. So, you know, it wasn't like a, a complaint session, you right. know, like you're not helping me. It was just that, wow, there's a lot. And, and, We've got to figure out whether you know like somebody's we're gonna hire somebody or you're gonna quit your job or how's this gonna go and he was like we'll just sell it and i'm like oh heck no oh heck no <laughs> mm -hmm. so, and, and but, i think that yeah. happens a lot you know where yeah. especially you know when, when we're talking uh male female like you said earlier you know the male wants to fix so yeah you know when, when you do something like that right his thought is well how do i fix this and then everything will be okay yeah that again in communication it, it may be where we need to preface some of our communications yeah so you know something like look i just need to vent for a second no response is needed just need to vent yeah yeah you know and 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 then you go because especially if you are talking to you know the individual who wants to really help um yeah, yeah they're they're going to spout solutions right away it's it's like a it's like a acts of service right the love language you know it's like oh well if i can that's an act of service is trying yep. to fix it so um yeah it's good to recognize you know and it, typically i don't get upset when that's what he wants to but <laughs> i do forget personally to preference preface like i just want to can i just let this out real quick like i yeah i'm gonna just give me five minutes I don't know, just blurt it all out and then I'll be fine, you know? And honestly, it just is. It's like word vomit all over somebody. <laughs> and 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 I don't mean it in a, like, I want to dump my trash on you and, and lay my right. burdens, you know, in yeah. your lap. It's just, you know, for, for women, I think that that's why we uh, gravitate towards one another in that way is because, you know, I don't expect anything from my girlfriend who just wants to call me and and she just honestly we don't say it so that you hear it we say it so that we hear it and that's huge for us like right. oh oh as i'm sitting here talking to you about it i just got my own answer thank you thanks for being my sounding board you know and um yeah so it, it's it's very interesting how that works yeah. for us and and makes me wonder on the flip side for for the masculine or you know male how do you guys solve your own problems like that if you're not a verbal processor i i think in many ways it's coming up with the first solution that pops into your head mm. Like the, the example you just gave, you know, you, you verbalize about all the stuff that's going on and what was the first thing that popped in his head? Well, we could just sell it. Yeah, yeah. You know, now there, there was no thought about, you know, business strategies and, and finances and, you know, all of those. It was just, well, what was the first thing that kind of popped into your head? So first thing popped, is, well, okay, if that's causing you the stress, then we get rid of that. Yeah, yeah. Um, but in so doing, we're going to cause more stress to, for the process yeah. of getting rid of that. <laughs> so, um, but but I think what's important to understand too is 
even though we may not verbalize, that doesn't mean there's nothing going on internally. And, you know, this is true for introverts, um, you know, as well, that the processing, even the verbal processing is, is going on inside. Hence mm -hmm. the introvert. Um, you know, the introvert isn't necessarily the one who has to physically remove themselves from, you know, a, a gathering of people. The introvert is the one who's processing their thoughts and emotions interiorly. So you tend to have a lot of interior dialogues. Mm. So in that sense, you know, if, if I would have an issue, instead of necessarily verbalizing that, I can sit with it for a few days and internally go through pros and cons and have dialogues with self and, you know, try to figure out what what's then the best solution. And you might get a sentence out of me about how I did all that, but it took me days. Yeah. Well, and so so here's what I think is because I can only consider it from a female point of view that verbal processing really brings me peace, right? Mm -hmm. And so on the flip side, from what you were just saying, all of the internal conversation, and and I kind of consider myself an introvert because I'm I'm that way as well. Um I guess only to an extent because I do verbally process, but so does that steal your piece? It, it, for me, yes, but you know, it really <laughs> does depend, you know, on, on the person. I mean, being an introvert and a guy, I mean, I'm, I'm kind of stuck in, into um, things, but, for me being able to do the internal processing and then act on that does bring peace because that was then something that I feel I was able to control. And as I like to talk a lot, you know, it's all about what's in our control and not in our control. Uh, so in that sense, that does, I, I think where we lose our inner peace and what we're trying to act in ways that are not natural to us, you know? So if, if the nonverbal processor is being pushed to be verbal, uh, is going to feel a lot of anxiety and stress, you know? Oh and yeah, it, no, I agree. And, with and that. I think the other way around, you know, the verbal person yeah. who's being pushed down in the sense of, you know, you can't say a word, um yeah. is going to feel a lot of that so i think that's where that comes in and if we can respect that in each other then you know i think we're gonna have better communication and be at peace you got a story there so, or something because the look on your face yeah no because it's just no it's just perfect that you say the things because it's like you know like i said i'm i'm a verbal processor and not that it's like i can keep a secret but in my family, nobody keeps secrets. And so I'm giggling because it's like, it's almost like telling somebody, I have a cookie. Don't tell anybody else I have a cookie. And they're like, okay. <laughs> and then they walk away and they say, oh, I just ran into my sister. <gasps> Guess what? My other sister, she's got a cookie. You know, like, and, it, yep. and it's just like, and then mom knows that we have a cookie. And then my aunt knows that we have a cookie. And my cousin knows we have a cookie. And we're all women. It's not like there's a whole bunch of men going, but everybody is like, it's like the family hotline, right? right. And, um, and we all love each other regardless of what kind of cookies or non-cookies we have. But but um, it's just funny that you say that because as soon as somebody says, hey, don't say X, Y, Z or don't tell, then it's like, what do you mean? Like it's, it's, <laughs> there's a yearning inside of me. I have to fulfill it. I have to tell somebody because I just can't hold it to myself. And mm -hmm. that, <laughs> that steals my peace when somebody won't let me talk about, you know, if it comes up naturally, great. If it doesn't come up naturally, oh, hey, by the way, did you hear, you know, and um, it's funny. Like it just, it just cracks mm -hmm. me up because that is exactly how the women in my family act. And I love them. I'm one of them. But at the same time, you made me giggle because I was like, oh, yeah, we can't hold ourselves back. <laughs> See, and, and in that scenario, the first thing I'm thinking is, 
awesome. Nobody else knows about these but me. <laughs> <laughs> this is why men don't tell us secrets. <laughs> yeah, so I'm definitely not going to tell it to anybody because now I got the cookies. <laughs> yeah, right. There you go. That's right. We're coming to you for the cookie jar. <laughs> mm hmm. Not oh, saying a word. <laughs> that's funny. That's so funny. I don't know. I just, and it's, it's fun. Like, it's just fun to consider the way that we are, we are, right? It's mm -hmm. just fun to, to look at it from that perspective when you can find fun in it and not be upset about it, you know, like, because right. I know that if I tell my mom that 90% of the time, my sisters are going to both know, you know, or my dad will know, you know, and mm -hmm. even though my dad's probably like half, you know, like, okay, I'm not, okay, thanks for telling me, you know, but <laughs> does not that, not that he's being rude to my mom, but he doesn't really care. You know what right. I mean? Like, it's like, okay, yeah, great. Good information. Nice to know. <laughs> but um, yeah, exactly. it is. And, and it, that's, again, that's a balance because if we're mm -hmm. both talkers, then how's that going to work out? Right. You know what I mean? Like if you're a talker and, and your significant other is a talker, then, you know, somebody's got to receive, somebody's got to be on the, the receiving end of things. Exactly. And and that's where, you know, I think it's important to emphasize that none of what we're talking about is either right or wrong. You know, right. it, it just is for the person. And when we can understand that, you know, uh, in another person and respect that in another person, then we're going to really help in bringing in more peace and happiness. And it's really going to help to foster good healthy communication because we can understand how the other is going to do that and we're respecting how the other is doing that yeah that's it's 100 percent important and uh if we don't then we're not going to have a good relationship mm -hmm. exactly and that's usually the issue is, is uh communication issues yeah, yeah. For sure. Well, that's mm -hmm. what happens to herbal processing, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you Very so good. much for having this fun conversation with me. Yeah, it, it was good. And, uh, you know, as we've mentioned before, you know, we, we come up with these topics without kind of pre-planning. So uh, yeah. th this was one I, I really had to think through quickly, which is not my nature. So yeah, <laughs> that, that was good to be challenged to be more verbal processing than internal processing. Amen. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you guys for listening. We really appreciate you. And thanks, Chris. We, um, I appreciate you. <laughs> well, thank you, Missy. And, and, uh, you know, we encourage everyone to, uh, share and like, uh, you know, this content and, uh, if there's topics that you want to hear about, just, uh, let us know, um, uh, put it in the, in the comments, send us a message. Um, and uh, let us know how you do your own verbal processing or not. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> All right. Excellent. Okay. Have a great Thank day. Thank you.